Stop buying knife sets. Seriously, stop it. Stop it. Stop throwing hundreds of dollars away on something you won't use. You know, those knife blocks, or there's like 15, 19, however many piece knife sets you'd find at Bed Bath & Beyond or some other no, you won't actually fucking use this store? Stop buying those. Don't ever buy those. Knife sets for the majority of consumers are a scam, and most people don't even realize they're being scammed. Stop gifting people knife sets. Stop rationalizing uses for useless kitchen gadgets that you'll never end up using. Stop pretending you need enough knives to feed 12 people when you only ever cook for yourself and maybe your partner, parents, dog, or roommate who's really good at sucking dick. Let me put a disclaimer for some of you gung-ho fuckfire commenters are gonna tell me, well, I'm a high level chef who also cooks dishes at home and I need tons of knives, or I've got a family of 30 I have to feed because we often choose a woman in our family to impregnate with the family semen bucket after each Monday morning. Yes, there are specific exceptions to this rule, but the majority of people who own a knife set never need more than a couple knives to do each and every job in the kitchen that they could possibly need to tackle. Let me give you an example. I'm a home cook. I've been cooking at home for many years. I've tried tons of different cooking recipes and tons of different cooking methods. Would you like to see my knife set? You know what? Yeah, yeah. Is that camera on? Is that camera on? You know, come here. Come here. Come here. You want to see it? Come here. You want to see it? Come here. You want to see it? Come here. There it is. Just three knives. A chef's knife, a bread knife, and a paring knife. I have never once ever required more than these three knives to do any culinary challenge set before me, because I'm not a butt-fucking hillbilly who thinks you need to swap knives for each and every single cut you make during your sloppy chicken and rice I threw together because Taco Bell closes early on Sunday dinner for two. Oh, and if you're using an entire knife set just because you're too lazy to wash the knives you already used, the Puente Hills landfill is looking for new residents. Maybe you should apply to live there because you belong in the garbage. This is a chef's knife. It's called a chef's knife, not because it's for stabbing the chef at your local Italian restaurant for hitting on your ex-wife when he brought the garlic bread. It's called a chef's knife because it's what a chef needs for 95% of the cutting done in a kitchen. And if you're keeping your dishes simple to cook, 110% of the cutting done in the kitchen. It turns out that most of the time, all you need is a big, heavy, sharp knife to cut through shit. And cutting through things tends to be the same all around regardless of how many times you tactical reload your cutting instrument or allow your obsessive compulsive disorder to alphabetize your vegetables against which type of knife in the block's gonna chunk them. I paid about $60 for my knives and realistically I probably overpaid a little bit. But they're real nice quality knives from Victorinox, I think that's how you say it, which is a reputable brand. And I paid that much because again, I give a shit about my cooking and I wanted to make sure that I'd have three knives that would last me a long time. If you want to save money, you can get these three types of knives at Walmart for a total of like $20, and they'll probably work just fine. If you really do want to spend a lot of money and get some professional quality knives, you'll find tons of knife options that are way better than any knife set in the same price range. And yet, what does everyone buy for their kitchen? A knife set in the potentially hundreds of dollar range? Featuring a heavy-ass block of instruments that will do nothing more than make it easier for you to have a really bad day if you ever trip and hit the counter wrong? Yes, there are some super-duper cheapo knife sets that are about 25 30 bucks for the whole shebang. But the issue with knife sets isn't entirely the price. In fact, that's the smallest issue. It's in how unnecessary they are. They take up huge amounts of room and end up being wasted money on how little of the product most people actually use. Have you ever used your kitchen shears for their intended purpose? Or do you use them to open grocery bags, food bags, maybe office supply bags like the rest of us? I mean, sure, there's people who will occasionally snip their own herbs or like to break down their own chicken. But here's a fun fact. Shears are just two knives together. And mother of fuck revelation time, you can do all the things that they want to do with a kitchen knife. By the way, I even lied here for dramatic effect. One of the intended purposes of kitchen shears is listed in the advertising as just using them as regular household scissors. Oh yeah, it really makes for a premium quality knife set worth top dollar when I can replace a piece of it from the school supplies section of my local Publix. Without looking up the answer, 
What's the difference between a chef's knife and a Santoku knife? Santoku knives are one of the most common knives found in knife sets. So what's the difference between a chef's knife and a Santoku knife? The answer? Functionally almost nothing. A Santoku knife is literally just a chef's knife without a curved tip. If you rock your blade while chopping, it's recommended that you use a chef's knife. And if you don't rock your blade while chopping, use a Santoku knife. Simple, right? So then why the fuck do knife sets come with like four of these? It's pointless. Pick which one suits your cutting style and use that forever. Throw the other one out. And even then, the difference is so minute that most people will not give a shit. I'll bet good money that not a single one of you out there who isn't a high-level cook has ever specifically and deliberately chose to use a Santoku knife over a chef knife. Maybe the only reason you would is because you're using it to make sure that every knife in your knife block gets use. And hey, now we're back to my earlier argument of you're rationalizing uses for things that you have no use for. No, your friends, mom, neighbors, whoever the fuck won't say, oh dear, I'd love to help you cook, but you seem to only have a chef's knife and I'm a Santoku knife kind of person. Uh, uh, and by the way, if you have a chef's knife, a Santoku knife, and if you have some that are the same but smaller length, you absolutely got scammed. There is literally never on Iron Chef French Hiroyuki Sakai's beautiful culinary earth a reason to use a smaller chef's knife than the largest one you're comfortable with. You want to use a tiny knife for precise work? You use a paring knife. You like using a smaller chef knife because you have tiny hands? You go fuck yourself. This is where the crux of my whole argument lies. Well, I'm making pizzas, so I'm going to need a pizza cutter. Shut the fuck up. Use a chef's knife. Well, I'm cutting raw meat and veggies, so I'll need to use different knives. Shut the fuck up. Cut the veggies first and then the meat. Or if you have to do it the other way, cut the meat, wash the knife, and then cut the veggies. Otherwise, the amount of dishes you're going to have to do is going to skyrocket if you just keep using more knives. But I need a serrated knife because I'm cutting bread. Yeah, usually it's a good idea. That's why one of my three knives is a serrated knife. Bread knife. Try to pay attention, okay? This is a true story that happened to me. I'm not making this up or exaggerating this for the video. Stick with me, it's related. When I was in my junior year of college, I was back home with my parents for the summer. I got a letter in the mail about a job offer where I'd be joining a sales team. I don't remember all the details, but I remember they advertised a time to show up for open interviews and then they'd go from there. Now I figured immediately it was gonna be some shady bullshit, but my dad thought it could potentially lead to an okay summer job and I may as well go check it out because worst case scenario, I just had to leave. Turns out this would be my downfall because my dad dropped me off and this was before Uber was really established. So I was stuck. I walked in and by the time everyone arrived, there was about 19 other people in the room. There was a guy at the front explaining that the company did bulk interviews to save time, talking to the people who had showed up, getting to know them, small chatter, and then he explained that the first thing everyone would be doing is watching a presentation about the company, then later they'd be pulled aside for a more personal interview later. This felt pretty strange, but I figured I'd stick with it because I hadn't had a serious job before this point, so truthfully, I didn't know entirely what to expect. Eventually, the guy warned Warming up, the crowd leaves the room, and in come two smiling, tall men in suits with a set of fucking kitchen knives. They introduced themselves as higher-ups in the company, gave a whole rousing motivational introduction of literal, like, phrases like, how's everyone doing today? And, oh, thanks for coming out. And then coldly proclaimed to the whole room, that right there is what you're going to be selling. Right then, that's when I knew I was wasting my time. I sat through that entire presentation circus shit show, which included them cutting through a piece of rope to demonstrate their product's quality and sharpness, and them explaining that they're totally not a pyramid scheme. No, we swear, we're a legitimate business, even though you can only sell to your friends and family, and if you want to recruit them into the company, you can do that too. I sat through that presentation without moving a muscle. I never smiled. I never responded to any of their questions. I zoned the fuck out. I had no way of leaving early. I barely blinked. I barely breathed. I'm pretty sure most of the time the guy was speaking, I was playing through the Donkey Kong Country soundtrack in my head. I looked like this. Okay, you can't really see my expression because of the sunglasses. Put some, put some bored eyes right here. Some really bored eyes. Would you hire this guy? 
I wouldn't. It was a typical shady sales recruitment pitch. Wow, look how incredible our product is. There's nobody on earth who wouldn't buy it. Oh yeah, we totally have people who aren't qualified for this job. We turn people down. If you get in here, it's a totally like exclusive good offer. <laughs> I mean, this is exactly what they said. One of the ways they tried to pump us up is they said, you know, earlier there was a really cocky Asian guy in here with his girlfriend and he didn't get the job. He was over, he thought he was overqualified. <laughs> that just stuck with me. I don't know why. But they'd say shit like, look how much money you could earn in just a year. In, in just a few weeks, you'll be doing our jobs. So after about a 15 minute break, when the presentation was over, the handler from earlier called people in three at a time to go into a tiny office. So I sat down in the office next to two other people that I distinctly noticed didn't say a fucking word the entire time. One of the tall, greasy businessmen from earlier sat across the desk and said, you know, I noticed you guys out there were really paying a lot of attention to our product. You seemed interested, engaged, and ready to learn. We want that focus here at our company, and I'm pleased to announce that we'd like to welcome you aboard to our team. From there, he offered us handshakes and a little bundle of sign-up sheets and some letters that he told us to fill out, mail in, and then wait for some calls back or emails or whatever. Needless to say, as soon as I got outside, I threw them in the fucking garbage. I called my dad, I gave him a whole bunch of I told you so's, and we left. So what was the point of this story? During that little presentation where they were pitching their product and showing off how good it is, the wannabe Patrick Batemans were demonstrating their incredible knife set, half the fucking room was mesmerized. Now, I don't know if it was secretly a government psyop, or if they were just really desperate to get a job, or if I was on a deleted episode of Ashton Kutcher's Punked, but half the room could not believe the earth-shattering fact that a sharp knife could cut through things. People audibly out loud said how much they thought the knife set was a good deal how incredible the product looked and how they love to own one and in fact some people specifically mentioned during the little break that they'd love to be their own first sale when they got hired to be fair they could have been actors hired by the company it could have been all part of the scam but it's still happened and it still affects and influences people buying knife sets are like wedding traditions or talking to relatives that you're not close to most of the time you don't actually want to do it but you do it because you feel like you're expected to well i own a kitchen now because i just moved out therefore i must own a knife set i need knives don't i knife sets present you with the idea that you think you're getting a great deal or a product that's going to revolutionize how you cook but in reality most of it's going to be wasted for 99% of the customers. The only difference between knife sets and most of those like single use, really specific as seen on TV kitchen gadgets is people don't typically stop to think, huh, this might be a waste of fucking money when it comes to knife sets. To further frustrate myself until I could heat up my coffee with my piss, I went onto Amazon and searched for knife sets and God, the results are disappointing. 19-piece premium black kitchen knife set with knife block. Master Meisen German stainless steel knives with knife sharpener and yada yada yada. This is a very popular listing. It's got tons of high reviews and a lot of sales. Comes with the chef's knife. Boom! Done! Throw the rest away! You got 13% off of a really expensive chef's knife. You can thank me later. But if you decide to keep this crap, let's see what you get. Eight steak knives. Realistically, how many of you have ever cooked enough steak for eight people? Sure, every now and then for certain occasions, but I feel like if you end up being the kind of person to do this regularly, you should just buy the steak knives separately. Look, eight steak knives for $25. Add that to the cheap-ass Walmart knives from earlier, and you're still $55 cheaper for every knife in the world you could need compared to this knife set. Throw in a whetstone and a knife sharpener so you won't need any more, and you're still cheaper. Bread knife, fine. Smaller bread knife, functionally worthless and insulting. Carving knife, oh, it's a smaller chef's knife. And a utility knife, which is an even smaller, smaller chef's knife? Fuck yeah! Amazing. You've managed to make me pay for the same thing, but worse, three times. Seven inch Santoku knife, five inch Santoku knife. Does no one ever stop to think of this shit? It's just so dumb. Do dumb, clueless assholes think chefs stop mid-vegetable chop and go, good lord? 
Lord have mercy, what am I doing? These celery sticks obviously call for the 5-inch Sentoku knife, and here I am using the 7-inch Sentoku knife. I am ashamed to my family, and I think it's finally time to turn this Sentoku knife into a seppuku knife. All-purpose household shears. Yeah, they don't even specify that they're for cooking. <laughs> you can shear anything around the house that you want with these. Go to fucking Home Depot, buy a pair of garden shears. They'll do a lot more for you. Paring knife. Fine. Sharpening steel. Sure. Easily overpriced set. What else? Doc or Decorio kitchen knife set with block. 19 pieces, high carbon, stainless steel, sharp kitchen knife set. To give this set some credit, it's pretty cheap for 19 pieces. It's $50, and that's actually cheaper than my three nicer knives. But it's still more expensive than the three knives that you need if you get them at a lower price. And that's the only credit I'm going to give this set, because it's forced me to clean the vomit off of my monitors twice. I'm a fan of all black things. I mean, 90% of what I own is black. But I'm going to say that these are some of the ugliest knives I've ever seen. Look at the wood pattern with the black carbon... Ugh. Yuck. Now this one mixes it up a bit, because it's got a vegetable peeler! Whoa! Wait, what? What do, you, what do you mean you can buy a vegetable peeler by itself at a grocery store for $3? Don't tell them that. They won't buy my knife set. Come on, man. I'm still employed by that shady fucking scam company. You're ruining my sales. I thought you were my family member or friend. Also, side note, I'm going to say the same thing I said when I saw Cheap Trick in JoJo's Bizarre Adventure. This stand is fucking stupid. I was gifted like a seven knife set like this a long time ago, and I threw it the fuck away. This will fall over all the time. This will look gross if even the smallest bit of food or water gets on it. Cheap plastic stands like this are a nightmare. Don't do it. We've got another 5-inch utility knife here. It's too small to be a chef's knife and too large to function like a paring knife, so what the fuck do you do with this knife? Uh, hey, Bill, that's a nice knife you got there. Uh, thanks, Steve. It's my utility knife. Wow. What do you do with that? I typically stab it into my testicles to take my mind off the fact I paid $50 for these ugly fucking knives. A pizza cutter. Fuck, are you all laughing at home as hard as I laughed when I first saw this thing? Look at the product picture. Even they know how shitty this is. It says ASS right on the knife. Just use a pizza cutter for your pizza like everyone else. Oh wait, no, even better. Use a fucking chef's knife. Five inch cheese knife. Yeah, the average consumer is easily gonna need a knife specifically for cheese. Can't tell you how many times I was making a sandwich on white bread and I got out the Kraft Singles and thought, oh, wait, 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 hang on. Can't just use a butter knife for this. Gotta get out my cheese knife. Cut the, cut the slice of cheese in half, then wash the knife, put it away, then go get the butter knife to cut my white bread sandwich in half. If you're the kind of person who is unironically considering needing a cheese knife in your life, congratulations, you're too rich to worry about considering these kind of things, you cryptocurrency laundering fuck. And look, the worst fucking one on this list. A tomato knife. I have sliced my own tomatoes countless times. Sandwiches. Pizzas. Using it as a euphemism for fucking your mom's fat Italian ass. I've done it all. But I didn't really even know a tomato knife was a thing until I saw this. Apparently they are. Look, I understand the cheese knife. You go to a nice restaurant, you get some antipasto or maybe like a fancy expensive cheese tasting platter. They're going to bring you a cheese knife so you can cut the cheese all over your lovely dinner guests. But what fucking establishment is going to make you cut your own tomatoes? Who in the dark wing fuck is ever going to need a tomato knife when they have a fucking chef's knife? Next. Ninja K32009 Foodie Never Dull Premium Knife System. Oh, it's not a set, it's a system. <sighs> Tactical. Fancy. This is the one they ship off to our boys overseas in the war, because it's a system. This one probably is so expensive because it has the celebrity tax on it. I don't know if they're directly endorsed by Tyler Fortnite Blevins, but... Possibly. Fun fact about this one, if you downgrade from the 12-piece knife set to the 9-piece knife set, you lose the utility knife, but you replace your Santoku knife with one that's two inches bigger. So if you're an indecisive shopper deciding between the two sets, you're essentially paying $30 more for them to worsen a knife you might use and give you a knife you'll never use. Henkel Statement Kitchen Knife 
set with block 15 piece chef knife. Normally $345. I understand there being a difference between a chief knife set and a quality knife set, but no knife set is worth $345. They could have shot one of these onto the moon alongside the first SpaceX launch and then brought it back to Earth, had Elon Musk cut his tongue off with it, and it still wouldn't be worth $345. Marco Ullman down. Oh my god, they're beautiful! And not at all gonna get old and obnoxious two weeks after you own them. You know what's a really smart idea? Getting a sharp blade that's roughly the same color as most cutting boards. There's no way you could possibly end up badly from this. I don't know, put the knife down on the cutting board for a minute. No one ever does that. That never happens in a frantic kitchen. Knife set. 23 pieces kitchen knife set with block and sharpener rod, high carbon stainless steel, full tang design. Ooh, Damascus steel. That means it cuts better. After all, the blade features with unique Damascus pattern, which make it has a attractive appearance. I don't know. I'm kind of on the fence, although I do want the X50 CR15 knife. When it's got a designation like that, it's either an assault rifle used to flatten an entire terrorist group or one hell of a knife. Damascus steel on kitchen knives is like pimping out a Honda Civic. Yeah, you might think you look cool, but anyone with actual money is still laughing at you. Gordon Ramsay block knife set, six pieces. You know what's shocking? This is the most sensible one of the entire list. It comes with the three standard knives alongside two decent knives instead of stupid gimmick knives. The knife holder is minimalistic and looks reasonable. And for $95, if these are like really high quality knives, like alongside the kind of thing Gordon Ramsay would actually use, it's not terrible. It's fine. This is the one I would consider over all the others we've seen so far. Wait, 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 wait. Yeah, yep. There it is. There it is. Gordon Ramsay 14 piece knife block set, $300. Six of them are steak knives. Nice celebrity tax, Gordon Ramsay, you greedy fuck. Go back to jacking off into hotel rooms and then inviting your camera crew in there to film a TV show about, oh, this hotel's so dirty, we found other people's semen with a blacklight. We know that's how you do it. We know that's how you set that show up. And finally, Miyabi Black 5000 MCD 67 10-piece knife set. 10 knives. $2,500. At this point, why? Why would anyone ever buy this? At this price point, the only people paying this much for knives are buying each knife of their collection individually as they need them in their restaurant or fancy kitchen. Meaning a knife set in concept by this price point is an entirely pointless idea. And when a knife is pointless, that's not a very good knife. By this point, you'd be buying professional knives for your professional kitchen setting. And in that case, you'd want to go with a really well-respected high-end brand like Wusthof. They offer a much better knife block, priced at a reasonable price point of $2,995. Tell me in the comments, realistically, how often you use every knife in your knife set per year. If you don't use every knife in your knife set every year, which is pretty much everyone on Earth, give me a rough percentage of how many knives in your set you actually use. My money's on most people use like a third. Maybe. I'm not pushing comments for engagement. I'm actually curious to see if I'm potentially wrong on this one. My experience in literal perfectionism says I'm not, but maybe I just live in a kitchen knife utilitarianism bubble. And I'm not coming out of that bubble. After all, I can't find a knife sharp enough to pop it.